Hello and welcome, this is Dawn. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some stitching. Now, stitching dies are super popular right now, and I personally really love the ones that give you the option to stitch or not to stitch. Because sometimes you just don't feel like putting in the time to do the stitching, although the results are gorgeous. You'll wanna look for dies that have the outline of the shape as well as the separate piece that cuts the holes for stitching. So this set here, the stitched poinsettia and holly die from Spellbinders is a perfect example. You can see here, you've got your outline of your holly leaf here, and then you've got the separate piece that you can drop in, and this is what will cut your stitching holes. The poinsettia here has one layer that will do your stitching holes. You could cut two of these and stitch them, or you have a solid piece that you could just do a solid poinsettia. As well as the holly berries here, you'll have a solid piece, and then you have the outline there where you can drop your pieces that will create the stitching holes. So this just gives you more options. Now I went ahead and I've cut out some pieces for my poinsettia, and like I mentioned, you have the flexibility to layer up two of these stitched, to layer one solid and one stitched, or you can skip the stitching altogether and layer two solid pieces. So again, this just gives you more flexibility. And for my first card, I'm gonna do one stitched layer and one solid layer. I've opted for white poinsettias. So for my stitching, I'm gonna use the DMC metallic thread here. This is a little bit finer than your DMC thread. But since my poinsettias are gonna be white, I wanted something that would contrast and I wanted something to add a little bit of elegance to the card. So the metallic thread's gonna be perfect for this. And when we do the stitching on these dies, we don't need a sharp needle. You'll want a blunt needle. So here you can see the tip of this is pretty blunt. Could you stab yourself with it? Uh, absolutely, it's small and semi-pointy. If you were to jab it hard enough, you could poke yourself. Uh, <laughs> you'd have to be pretty forceful to break the skin though. This is, I, I will give you a spoiler alert. <laughs> My next video, <laughs> I had to use a sharp needle and um, yeah, let's just say I'm a danger to myself. Not to others, just myself. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to look at the stitching here. Now, I have a little tip for you that I have found works for me. I like to take this glue dot material. Now this, you could use Zots, the glue dots, the round ones, it would be perfect. Um, but I had this one sitting on my desk. This is actually strips of that same glue dot material. It is sticky on both sides. I'm gonna lay down a little bit of it on the back this is gonna provide a sticky area for me to press my loose threads into and hold them into place. This will alleviate me having to put a bunch of um, washi tape on the back. Because this is a smaller die, I don't have as much surface area. So for me, this was the perfect fix for that. So stitching these is very easy. You can see here in the die that Spellbinders has added embossing lines. It will actually deboss the um, pattern which you are recommended to stitch. Now you can stitch whatever pattern you want, go in whatever direction you want, um, but they have their recommended pattern etched into the die. And you can see that there. So we're just gonna follow that for this. Like I said, this is very easy. I am trying to do this on camera. So I apologize if it does seem a little fiddly, but I am trying to A, hold it up in the air while keeping it in focus for you guys. So I'm not, I'm standing as well. So I'm not really in the most comfortable position, um, but you can see here I get in a groove in just a second. I just gotta get comfortable with a standing, holding this levitating in the air and making sure that it stays in focus for you guys and you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just doing a series of back stitches. Up one hole, down through the next. So pull your thread. I'm going to use my finger in the back there to hold the thread taut. Put the needle up through one hole and then down through the next. It's actually quite, quite simple. I, I love these particular designs here because they allow you to add just that little bit of extra detail in a very simple way that's very impactful in the end card. So here we can see I'm doing the last stitch on this one petal here. Then I'm gonna take that thread in the back and I'm gonna press it into that sticky area. And that's gonna hold my thread in place. 
Now I can just repeat those same steps for the remaining petals, up through the center, down through the hole at the edge of the petal, radiating around the pattern. Very simple. When it's all done, I'll take that end piece of the thread and press it into the sticky area there in the center as well. As mentioned, I'm going to layer one of the stitch layers on top of one of the solid layers, but I like to shape the petals just a little bit before I do that. So I'm using my fingers here to pinch a little cup shape into each of the petals. And then I'll use some liquid adhesive, put a little dot right there in that center area and layer the stitched piece on top of the solid piece. Um, I'll use my tweezers to hold that together until the glue adheres. And then our flower is uh, ready for its center. Again, you have options here. I'm going to use the die included in the set. Uh, it cuts these little circles, and we're going to cut that from some gold mirror cardstock. Now, you could use um, sequins to make the center. You could use rhinestones. I'll show you a different variation on the center later. But for now, we're going to use uh, just the die and the pieces that it cuts. So we're going to put down some liquid adhesive. Here's the base. This is going to show you where to put your individual little circles. I like this little touch. It adds a bit of dimension. They could have easily just left it as like one flat round circle. But I like the fact that you get the base and the three little individual circles that you can now stack into the center. And it's going to give it even more dimension. Now, if for some reason you need the back to look clean and finished, say you don't like the stitching showing, um, or you just want to give your piece a little more stability or keep those petals propped up, what I've done is I've taken some small square foam adhesives, I've put it on the back of the petals here, and then I'm going to adhere that to another base. I'm going to line it up with my stitched petals and push that right into place, and this is going to one cover that stitching from the back side and it's going to prop those petals up so that they are not as um, delicate or flimsy they won't get caught on things it just overall will make the card a little more solid and you won't have to worry about pieces getting caught or ripped off when uh, going in and out of an envelope but let's face it this finished card, there's no way you're putting it in an envelope. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> this is going to be one of those give the card with the gift in person type of deals. All right, so I've gone ahead and created a couple more of the flowers. And for the last step, I'm going to put one of those bases cut from green behind each flower. This is going to be the leaves for the poinsettia. In this set, you have holly leaves, but you don't have any poinsettia leaves. And that is because poinsettia leaves are... The whole poinsettia is the leaves. The center area is the flower. So some of the leaves are red and some of them are green and that's what gives you the flower and the leaf look. Now for the holly leaves, I'm not going to show the stitching because we just went through the stitching on the flower, but I wanted to show you how I cut these out. So like I mentioned, you can use just the outline or you can use the outline with the stitched center. And for that, I like to use press and seal. I've showed this trick before. I will link to my press and seal hack, but this is great for holding pieces that are inlaid together. I do not want these to shift when going through my die cutting machine because if they were to overlap, I could mess up the die or my machine. But pressing them into this press and seal will hold both pieces in place so that I can cut this repeatedly and I will get the exact same placement for the stitching each time. Now you could use washi tape to hold these in place when you cut them and that would work just fine. I just find this way easier because I can use this repeatedly. And I did cut this from several different colors because I wasn't quite sure where I was going yet, but you can see it makes quick work of cutting multiples. In the end, I opted just to go with the darker green, which is the evergreen from Concord and Ninth. And I love green and white and gold. I think it is a beautiful color combination, but I wanted to add in another leaf. So I grabbed the Honeybee Stamps Lovely Layers Winter Foliage, I believe is this one. I will have it linked below if I got that wrong. But I wanted just a slightly different leaf. So I grabbed a bright green. I believe this is Peridot from Spellbinders. Again, I will have everything linked in the video description below. I just wanted something a little bright to pop on our white background. I already knew I was going to do white on white. And for that, I'm using the Spellbinders. Um, Holly and oh, what is this one? Um, <laughs> this one is from Yanis Makula's Delightful Christmas Collection, and it is called Holly and Lee. Oh, it's a 3D emboss. I don't know what it's called. I'll link it below. Lord help me. 
All right, so I've sprayed my cardstock front and back with just a little bit of water. This is Nina 110 pound classic crest. Love this folder, you guys. This is honestly one of my favorite 3D embossing folders right now. I'm going to leave in the arranging of this, but I'm going to speed it up just a bit, uh, talk you through the process. So I landed on white on white. I was actually uh, video crafting with my bestie Kelly, Kelly Taylor, for those who may not uh, know her. I'll leave a link to the video description below. And she was doing a video with uh, adding dimension to white on white. And so I was like, all right, we'll run with that. We'll do some white flowers on a white background. Now, I personally love green and white together. I think it is a fantastic color combo. A bright green and black is also another beautiful high contrast um, color combo and the gold just really elevates it. I'm working, I've, heard, I've mentioned this before in a video where I try to create a visual, I lead the eye and a surefire way to do that is to use an S pattern. Here, my pattern is in reverse. So, but you'll see, I start in the upper left-hand corner. My flowers swing around to the right. They're coming down. My sentiment is going to live right under that second flower there. So the eye is gonna go from the upper left. It's gonna swing down through the sentiment back over to the lower left. And then that holly leaf there is pointing to the right. So we've got a backwards S that leads the eye right to the sentiment. This is a surefire way to create balance and draw attention to the areas, direct the focus to the areas that you want to be the focal point. I've cut some of those center area, the things that we use to create the centers of the poinsettia, I cut those from red and we're adding those as berries. Okay, for the sentiment, I'm using the Delightful Christmas Sentiments Hot Foil Plates and Dyes from Yana's Delightful Christmas Collection with Spellbinders. There's a lot of great sentiments in this set and I've chosen the Christmas Blessings. I'm going to hot foil that using their matte gold foil. I have become a lot more comfortable using the hot foil system here, you guys. If you are on the fence with the hot foil or if you have the hot foil and um, you are, you maybe you feel clumsy with it, that's the best description I can give you. I felt very clumsy using it at first. Uh, I will say like with anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it and the more comfortable you feel using it. So I now, I used to, I kind of used to dread pulling it out um, and I would try to do all the foiling I could at one time. It has gotten so much quicker and uh, I'm much more comfortable with it now and I don't hesitate to just pull it out for one sentiment anymore. I use the coordinating die to die cut this as well as two more, two more from white cardstock and I've stacked those together. This will just give my sentiment a little bit more thickness, a little bit more rigidity, make it more chipboard like. And now it is just time to adhere everything. I used a mix of liquid adhesive and 3D foam like I normally do. Here you can see I'm making sure to pop up that sentiment. It's going to be hanging over that poinsettia which we know has some height to it. So we got to make sure that it clears that and then lays flush or level with it. So little foam there, press that into place and here you can clearly see that backwards S that I've created, the upper left going over to the right, down through the sentiment, back over to the lower left, and then swinging back to the right with that holly leaf. Love the way this turned out. So beautiful. But this one is, it's a little labor intensive, definitely worth it in my opinion. But let's take a look at something without any stitching. So we're gonna make a card that has no stitching but is equally as beautiful using the same supplies. So we're gonna use just the solid images, but they're a little mm, plain as it is. Now we're gonna dress these up a little. There's two ways you can do that. I used both on this card. So for the first way, you're gonna use some metallic ink. In this case, I'm using the Honey Bee Stamps Gold Metallic Ink. Again, I'm going to shape the petals just like I did before. And this is going to give me some raised edges and make it easier for me to just hit the edges of these petals as I dip it into the ink pad. So you can see here, they're cupped. The edges are up a little bit higher. So when I take this, turn it over and kind of tap it onto the pad, only those tips and those edges are really making contact with the pad versus the entire petal. So I'm just gonna take it, dip it in, add a little bit of, for lack of a better term, gilding 
uh, to the edges. You could use a gold metallic texture paste to do this and just rub it along the edges with your fingers. That's going to give you the shine plus a little bit of texture. This is just going to give you the shine uh, without any extra bulk or texture. And then here I'll hold this up and you can see you get that high shine from the metallic ink, but it's all flat. And this is one way that you can add a little extra interest to those petals. The second way that I did it was I started off the same way, shaped my petals, and now I've got some clear embossing ink. I'm going to, again, just dip the edges of those petals into the embossing ink, and it should only get on the outer edges of those petals. And then I'm going to dip that into my gold embossing powder, tap off the excess, and then we're going to use our heat gun to melt that. It's going to give a very similar look to the previous one, except for you're going to get a little bit of texture and it's going to have a little bit more of a higher shine. So for these, I just layered the inked one on the bottom and the heat embossed one on the top, glued those together. And now we're going to add our center. Instead of using all of the little circles here, like we did on the last one, I'm going to use that base layer. I'm going to glue that to the center. And then I'm going to add some rhinestones on top. I wanted something solid for the rhinestones to sit on, and this will also give me a guide on where to place each of my rhinestones. And going with the gold theme, I'm gonna use the gold mix gems here from Spellbinders, and this has four different sizes of rhinestones in it. I'm gonna use the next to the smallest, so the third size here, and I'm gonna place that over the little circle that we've put in the center. You can see there that center is three circles uh, connected together. So it gives me the perfect spot to place each of these little rhinestones. So I'm going to do the same thing for three of my flowers here. And you can see the dimension that these have. And they're nice and simple and didn't require any stitching, but still just as pretty. I repeated those same steps with my holly leaves and cut some more of those leaves from Honeybee and I did another panel here with that 3D embossing folder but I trimmed this down to four and a half by four and a quarter because I'm going to do some uh, hot foil there on the bottom panel of my card. And again for that I'm going to use the delightful Christmas sentiments from Spellbinders. I've chosen the smaller all caps hoping your holiday season is filled with joy and we're going to hot foil that directly onto the panel at the bottom here like so. I'm again using that washi tape to create the hinge method. I do remove some of the stick from the washi by pressing it onto my pants a couple of times and removing it just to remove some of that stick so it doesn't rip my paper when I take it off. And just like the last card, we're gonna use that matte gold foil from Spellbinders. I'm gonna lay this on my glimmer machine, push the timer, and when that is ready to go, we will send it through the Platinum 6. Now I do, this is a skinny strip. You'll notice I put this card on at an angle. I wanna make sure that I have as the, I wanna make sure that I have the rollers hitting as much of the plate at once as possible and I don't create a speed bump. And when I get to the plate, you can see here, I'm going much slower and allowing that pressure to really transfer that foil and this will this usually keeps me from having to reverse back through. Sometimes if you go forward and then backward, your plate can shift. Now I have mine taped in place, so I shouldn't have that problem. But if you have a large plate and you haven't taped it, maybe try that. Just go, go much more slowly through your die cutting machine to allow the plate and the foil to come in contact with the cardstock and transfer the foil as long as possible. With all of my pieces ready, now all I had to do was create my arrangement. And then once that was done, adhere it all together. So let's go ahead and take a look at the finished cards. I'm really happy with how these turned out. And um, I'm glad that I put in that little extra effort for the stitching because this is absolutely gorgeous. I trimmed that panel down just a tiny bit and adhered that to a gray card base. And you can see all of the dimension all of the tactile dimension especially that that stitching adds absolutely adore this and i would hands down do it again 
But I might be a little upset if somebody threw this one away. I'm not going to lie. Um, normally, I don't care if you throw away my cards. <laughs> this one, I might get upset. So how about one that takes a little bit less effort, but still is just as beautiful? Here is that one with no stitching. Instead, we used some gold accents on all of our floral elements, a little bit of hot foiling there at the bottom, and still equally as gorgeous, just less time consuming. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments below to stitch or not to stitch. What do you think? As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will have everything featured in this video linked in the video description below. So make sure you check there if you're looking for anything. I'll also have a link over to Kelly Taylor's channel and her white on white video for you to check out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss my next video. Thanks guys. I will see you next time. Bye.